welcome to the third and final stream about Age of Triumph, which is scheduled to be the very last live event in Destiny 1. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to you about the rewards that you will earn, about delving back into some of the biggest challenges that you faced across three years of adventure in Destiny. Ian, Ian McIntosh. McIntosh. Yes. And Josh Amrick. Oh, hi. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, this concept for the Vault of Glass armor set. Yes. Check so that out. Who's the artist on that? This painting was done by Ryan Demita. And as you can see, it's a beautiful Vex armor set. And the idea is that as you've gone through and raided the Vault of Glass several times, your guardian has gone back in and taken trophies and created this new armor set out of it. So what I love about this set is um, you're more vexified than ever, and it's got those beautiful blue glowing accents all over the place. Glowing cape. Uh, it's a cloak, actually. It's oh, sorry. Yeah. Cloak, yes. Josh is very sensitive about his hunter terminology. That's <laughs> I It's all good. It's all good. It's beautiful. And then uh, we'll, we'll certainly talk about the weapons. We can see uh, dueling fate bringers here. Uh, but before we do that, let's... Uh... Oh, yeah. Check out that warlock. So on the back, you'll see those glowing tentacles from off of a harpy. Mm -hmm. Just love that. And if you check out the legs, if you glance down, you'll notice the whole legs, well, from the knee down, have been replaced with Vex pieces. So there's really no foot inside there. It's just Vexified feet, which would be a fun challenge, I think, for cosplayers. <laughs> <laughs> Without any personal uh, harm inflicted, hopefully. Yes. Don't and hurt yourselves. No, please do not hurt yourselves in the interest of cosplay. And yeah. then finally, we have our friend, oh, the yes. Titan. I, I love this Titan armor. Uh, I'm a little biased because I created this set. But um, I think the highlight is definitely the shield on the back of the armor there, which is just ornamental. It doesn't actually give you any perks, but still looks really badass. Well, and that's why we Confirmed. fight in certain instances. I want to look, look like a badass. So uh, these are uh, the ornaments that we are applying to uh, the new armor that's dropping in the raid. Uh, if you're playing the new 390 raids, you're going to receive uh, drops that will bring you up to max light. And it is my understanding that from the challenge modes, when these raids are uh, the weekly featured activities, uh, you will get the ornament tokens. And you can spend those tokens to apply these specific ornaments. Yes. They'll be, you can use the same tokens on all of the sets, so it's not specific for each one. Mm -hmm. you, if you earn it in one area, you can use that token on any armor set you'd like. So if uh, Krota's End is the weekly featured raid activity and I earn ornament tokens, but I really love this armor set and I have these drops, I can apply that to this and complete my Vault of Glass Absolutely. Master Raider oh, yeah. ornamental armor set. So you will notice that Deej has the standard issue Fatebringer uh, coated in sweet bronze material mm -hmm. and looking ever classy. Uh, but our friendly hunter here has an, uh, an adept version. Uh, an elemental said. primary, if That's you will. That's correct. So what we did is we, we took the idea that we did Forever Go and Trials of Osiris. So there are two different versions of each of the raid primaries. Okay. Uh, in this case, Fatebringer. And there is an adept version that is also an exotic. And so if you would like Fatebringer to show up with its arc damage uh, from year one, then what you can do is run the exotic version during those arc burns when you know you're gonna want it, and uh, you will be ready to go. However, if you wanna run with it just in PvP, then you might wish to apply the legendary version mm -hmm. of the standard Fatebringer at max light level that you've gotten yeah. from your hard work during the raid. and. Uh, and then run with it and maybe some other exotic instead. And so, but you can use your exotic slot to get those primary element, elemental damages back. So that's not a fate bringer ornament, that is an exotic fate bringer. And that is exactly right. Redesigned, redeployed. An exotic adept fate bringer. Okay. And that's what it looks like. Here we go, the Vex Mythoclast. The Mythoclast, uh, yeah, so, you know, from day one, it was a, a troublemaker, as <laughs> it were. A, just a tear, yeah. I remember uh, 
If you brought this into the Crucible when it was first being earned, you were the only person having fun Correct. in the Rumble match. Everyone loved you and everyone hated yeah, you. Everyone all admired you. Same time. You were universally loathed. You're Let's hear it in action jerk. again. Let's hear it in action in all of its glory. Oh, it's got an ornament that you can apply to the exotic myth class uh, and can re earn it in the updated raid. Uh, but yeah, generally, same, same mythic class, super high damage potential in close range, a yeah. little squirrely at range, uh, but super deadly. Have you made any changes to uh, how it works essentially in the sandbox? Uh, no, not, not recently. So if you have a mythic class, you kind of know how it works. I will say that uh, one of the things about balance in general is that you don't have to touch everything to get a change, right? Mm -hmm. You can touch everything around an object and get yeah. changes. And so. Mythic class being a fast firing fusion rifle sitting basically in a in an AR like position uh, because of changes made to other weapons in primaries, I think uh, I think it's worthwhile and it will be worth pulling back out and people will be able to have some fun with it. Uh, these are the new champions of the Vault of Glass. We thank you for strutting your stuff. You are dismissed. Cast a yep. handsome looking bow and disappear into Ooh, the ether. Nice. Yes. Farewell and see you again soon. All right, so up next, Ian. Yes. Uh, we're going to take a look at a concept for the armor that you will earn in Crota's End. In Crota's End. Yes. So let's take a look at this. Who's the artist on this? The artist was Dima Goryanov. And uh, when I first saw this concept art, it just blew my mind. They're just, they're just bristling. Check oh, them out. Yeah. I mean, you can see them from a the distance, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. These and guys when are you get painting close, targets you'll... on themselves in the crucible. <laughs> yeah. Notice uh, how the energy is just flowing out of them, and it's just a constant wave of bright light. Uh, definitely like my favorite set overall, I think, and the Warlock in particular, very nice. Cool. Uh, and uh, talk to me about how else this energy uh, impacts the game experience. So, yes, uh, we did something really special here, uh, at, and what we did is, if you get damaged, then you'll notice what happens is that glowing proto energy rebounds and protects you for a split second. This will only hurt for a second, my friend. Check and then out. as you recover, it grows back out. That's yeah, so cool. Super cool. Yeah, we had a lot of fun coming up with that. And of course, you've got the floating rocks there too, which is just like the cherry on top. All right, of course, we're going, to, uh, we're going to have tons of fun with this on all the characters, so you can see. <laughs> really cool looking. Yeah, I never get tired of that. Guy, this just looks like, <laughs> this looks like some sort of exotic dinosaur from Jurassic Park or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I had the pleasure of making the Titan for this one. Wow, really cool. Really cool. And the, the floating rocks almost seem to become aggravated they do, yeah. When you're damaged, they shake around a little bit as they try to recover, and then they get into a stable state and chill out a little bit. Sir, sir, you have no horns, sir! Mm -hmm. Get behind me, get behind me! No horns on my ex. There's no, no horns. <laughs> no horns on my ex. I'm absolute, I have no horns. So we've chosen to leave Spindle and uh, Black Hammer, never to be heard or seen again, was lost, I'm afraid, in, in Tukroa. Uh, so for those of you wondering where it is, that's the God's honest truth. <laughs> Too good to bring back. Uh, so get your spindle and have fun with that instead. But on happier terms, yes. if you go past the Oversoul Edict and go all the way down to the Titan, I believe what you'll find in his hands will make people happy, which is the Necrochasm. Oh. So what we've done this time around is one, it has an ornament uh, that can be applied to it, but it also previously had an effect it's an assault rifle, as many of you know, and if you got a precision kill with it, the guys would explode and deal damage to those around them. But yeah. assault rifles, turns out, harder to land precision hits when you need them than you may think. Uh, so now we've updated the Necrochasm. So when you get a kill with Necrochasm, any kill, the victim will explode dealing damage around them. And so this should be a much more potent and devastating weapon. ARs have also gotten a boost in okay. general, and so are more potent. We can talk about the details of that a little bit later on. But just okay. so you know, Necrochasm, real, real good. And uh, Ian, we're going to take a look at uh, 
our next concept. So you're showing us a lot of the work that uh, different people at Bungie have done. Mm -hmm. uh, recently on the blog, you were kind enough to take us through uh, you know, the creative process that you share with your entire team about how we created the Iron Lord mutants, the mutant Iron Lords yes. that we face at the end of Rise of Iron. Yes. Uh, similarly, talk to us about some of the people that you worked with <laughs> to bring this new concept to life for the uh, armor ornaments for King's Fall. So the concept artist that did this painting is Ryan Gitter. And uh, it's the same kind of principle as the Crota set. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your Crota, or not your Crota, your hive energy yeah. in your armor. And this time it's blue instead of green, which is a little more restrained. So for the players, especially the PvP guys, they don't want a big arrow pointed at them the entire time. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a more restrained, but still really cool look. This is good for your, your elegant, formal evening gatherings. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. So Some let's, uh, cheese return. and wine tasting. <laughs> Some cheese and wine tasting, exactly. This is your perfect getup for that. So I can see the, uh, the armor effects here. This, this energy is, is just pouring through these cracks. Yeah. And, and the kind of visual language that we went for is, imagine, you know, kind of like, molten lava within, although it's crota or the uh, hive energy, and then the shell is more cool and just more glassy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you know the energy is too intense, it cracks through, and then you see it spilling out. And this also behaves in the same fashion where if you get damaged, then Lights it, re it reacts to that. So energy retracts and then returns. Exactly. I mean you no harm. I come in peace. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Really cool. Really cool. Yes. And last but not least, Mr. Hunter. Oh yeah. I think the Hunter might be my favorite on this set. That's because it's a Hunter. It's, yeah, I mean I'm, a, I'm biased. I actually created this one. Zoli's Bane here is a fine example. So what we've done is hand cannons, we've brought back the range just a hair. And the chat's gotta be blowing up right now. Just a hair, I promise. It's about three meters. That's it. It's not much, it's just to take the teeth off of some of the some of the more potent hand cannons out there. And with the AR change, I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna put the primaries in a better state of balance in okay. general. We have made for both uh, this raid and Wrath of the Machine. Uh, King's Fall and Wrath of the Machine, we have made elemental, exotic, adept versions of their primary weapons. So those do exist. They look for, fantastic. For every raid now. They all have them. Okay. That's right. Yep. And uh, you can get the uh, legendary drops if you're playing the 390 raid whenever you want to, when, it, when you find it in the director after right. they debut as the featured activity. But it is the weekly featured activity where you're going to get your adept exotic you need drops. The, the challenges give you a chance at getting those drops. You're going to get so. your tokens for those armor ornaments. Or ornaments, yeah. And yep. then a chance for a, for a drop for the exotic okay. adepts. So uh, you just uh, pivoted to Wrath of the Machine. Let's take a look at this concept, Ian. Yes, yeah, so this concept was... Uh, done by James Crowley, who's actually the, con or the uh, visual effects artist that created this armor set. Now this set, I would say, has the most special effects of any armor that we've ever created for Destiny. Really cool set. And it's got a lot of nice little subtle things too. Not only have you got the stuff coming off of the armor, but then you've got those digital lights kind of flickering around mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the interior of the set. Yeah, it's just coursing over the entire skin. Yes, just crawling with energy. And then inside you can see just the power source within peeking through where it's starting to open up. Neat. All right, so talk to me about these guns. Yeah, so actually our friend Hunter there in the middle is holding a Genesis chain. We teased this earlier. This is, this is now the point in the show where I was intended to talk about AR. You scooped uh, yourself. I yeah. did. I did. But so I, auto rifles. Let's get specific. So what we've done is ARs now. So back in 2502, we made hand cannons fall off mm -hmm. dramatically. Like we lowered the damage, the max percentage of damage at maximum range that they yep. can hit, uh, which put them in a much better place. Uh, and then with the recent update, that's better now. But the ARs, we've taken a, the opposite route. So this time I bumped the maximum amount of damage uh, that they fall off to. So uh, they get a decent extension of range, 
uh, across all ranges, really. They just they just deal a little bit more damage, and mm -hmm. I think I think it will give them the teeth they need to to pull them up where they need to be. We got them real close last time, uh, but the data shows they're they're just not quite there yet, and so do the voices from the community. This one, I believe, they will react very positively to, and I hope that they only remember that and not that we nerfed hand cannons in any way. Just a touch. You just, said just a touch. It is, it is a you very You just pulled in touch. the range. You didn't nerf it. You That's just right. pulled in the range. That's right. They're still bad. Corround them, if you are. Still, they're still a good close quarters stand and deliver weapon. And still my favorite weapon. It's still your favorite personal weapon, so that should tell you something. You're a sort of gunslinger actual. Let's take a look at our last concept, Ian. Last and final set. Last and final concept for the uh, Age of Triumph armor actually yeah. comes from uh, the new box that we've created mm -hmm. for this event. Yeah, this is a quick paint over done by the art director, Shakai Wang. Mm -hmm. Just to clear up, we're adding chroma to this armor, and that's how those icons shine through? Yes, exactly. So this is the only chroma set for this release. OK. Um, Let's bring them out. Let's bring out the Guardians of the Age of Triumph. Yes. Just beautiful. So in the interest of uh, presentation, mm -hmm. in the interest of fashion, we've used all white chroma yeah. today. But obviously, if you have stores of chroma, as I do, in your inventory, any color will work here. So yeah. let your imagination run wild as to what colors you would apply to this armor. And the class items, all, of, all three of them, um, are pretty rare. We haven't released many Chroma class items in the past, so yeah. this is your chance to get something to fill out your set, whatever it happens to be. And how do they earn those class items? The class items exclusively are gotten through the quest. The quest that you obtain from the speaker. And then uh, a little further down, you've got a Lord of Wolves. Yep. Also ornamented. Sweet shotgun action. Looking nasty. Looking like a Kel of Kells right now. And then uh, all the way at the end, uh, oh, we have... Oh, my baby. Yeah. So, uh, Look at that. Suros has always been our Italian car company of weapon manufacturers. Of course. And this kind of celebrates that. So we've got the gold and black. Definitely the color palette you would expect from any self-respecting Suros weapon. Exactly. Looking mean. Looking great. Uh, so Arc Hunters uh, and those touched, I will say, mm -hmm. uh, by the recent health regen changes, uh, purposeful or not, uh, will be happy to hear that many of those changes are rolled back, including Ward of Dawncast. Again, this is on the blog if you want to go get the details, service regime rolled back. Uh, but there are things that kept the change, uh, Red Death, Life Steal on Warlocks, Hungering Blade. Mm -hmm. But that change has gotten buffed. You get a lot more damage per kill now. Okay. It's generally just a better use, so it yeah. will keep you alive better, longer, happier. Better, stronger, longer, faster, happier, stronger, stronger. Yeah, faster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Blink as well uh, got a buff in that we kept the, the changes where your hug goes away for a little while, but I rolled yeah. that back a hair so it doesn't okay. last as long. And we've removed the recovery nerfs that were included on the node. So when you chose Blink before, your recovery would just be pushed down. Okay. Uh, that is no longer necessary, we feel, and we've pulled that off okay. uh, so you don't have to worry about it. So then Truth got out a lot of people who were angry at me. Always tell the truth. Yeah. Uh, Truth, we pulled a rocket from it. It's now a single rocket, so you fire it and you have to reload it every time. Yeah. Very mad. Very mad. Very mad. So, I do think it's the right thing to do for the weapon. Yeah. Um, I think it's you know the good, a good call, but as a show of faith, an act of faith, if you will, <laughs> we have put a rocket back in your maximum inventory, so yeah. you can carry more in your pants. And then uh, we've also pushed it to the fastest <laughs> rocket launcher reload available, so nice. you do have to reload it. But so you're a man of principle and compromise. Exactly. It's a difficult I thing. Do, well, you know, it's a okay. balancing act. Yes, um, exactly. And then, so we've made changes to No Land Beyond, which I believe you can see here. There also newly ornamented. Newly ornamented uh, No Land Beyond. So sweet digital camo uh, now available for your No Lands. Okay. Uh, the thing is, with the No Land, maybe maybe you want to aim at a bad guy and they can shoot you in the face without killing you. There you go. Okay. There you okay, go. Okay. Yeah, Don't so, kill me. Don't kill me. So a lot of kick, right? Yeah. A yeah. lot of kick. Uh, so no land now acts more like a tradi traditional sniper rifle. If you uh, can get the shots on unsuspecting folk, 
Yeah. Uh, you are probably going to clean up. If they see you and begin to react to you, you may want to change weapons and or just bail out of that situation. Okay. Oh, look at you. Now I got a sidearm, so I'm part of the problem. <sighs> look at this guy. I want to interrupt you for a second. Yes. We are talking about sidearms, but now that I've made a kill... Oh, look at your scorey. I have activated my scorey's artifact. That's right. Hey, hey, I want to apologize for what just happened there. Thanks for coming back. Uh, um, so yeah, so scorey. So let's switch to that real quick. So scorey has been changed so that now it runs for a minute if you have gotten a kill while your super is full. Yeah. Uh, and it will wear off. So in trials, instead of camping, um, in general, just like... it. It's not the greatest thing for us when we see like, hey, we made a thing, and now everybody just sort of sits around for three minutes while they cook their supers with it. Like, wasn't quite what people wanted. Yeah. And so now it's a little more active. You get a kill while your super's full. That thing kicks off. Start charging your super for all your friends, and works for another minute. Gotcha. Uh, in PvP, it would be easy to keep those kills coming. Basically, scory should never turn off. In PvP, especially trials. Yes. Mostly especially trials. trials. Uh, that is a much harder thing to do, and at least means that you're playing the game uh, if you want to burn your super up. Yeah. So. And we are playing Mayhem, for those of you in chat who are wondering why my super is recharging so quickly. So uh, as my super recharges, uh, we're not going to be camping in the back to share super energy with my friends. But uh, not what you think. I mean you no harm. I apologize in advance. Part of the problem. <laughs> now that I've made a kill, Score is working. Score is working. Yep. And between rounds and trials, that will also disable it, right? Okay. Because it's it's basically as if you died and came yep. back. And so every round, you'll need a kill to kick off score. Okay. So uh, relative to being part of the problem yes. uh, with uh, sidearms, yes. um, talk to me about, I interrupted you. Yeah, you, were, you were on the path of talking about how this sidearm in my hand was about to change. Okay. And, okay. And, so you had, I believe you had 12 in the magazine and 8 in your pocket. And now you are going to come back with just 12. So you come back with one magazine's full every time when you are respawned, okay. when you die and respawn. Yep. And so, uh, so it's in theory, it's enough that you want to, you'll have some in your pocket, keep you safe while you head for a special crate, yep. uh, but it is likely not enough. Hopefully it is not enough to just run around without ever having to think about special. So now, Nice. That's right. Uh, so this is the one thing. We haven't talked about it. We've purposely kind of kept it as a semi-surprise. Uh, Surprise. Yeah. We, uh, Surprise. The PvP guys uh, made this change for us, uh, and I think all of us are super happy with it. So the idea now is that special crates were just like heavy crates. When you pick them up, it will instantly reload the weapon in your hands. And I think that, in combination with the sidearm, I think that's our, I'm hoping, that's our magic bullet to fix the special problem. I get it. I yeah. get what you did there. Yeah. The uh, magic bullet that well, goes yeah. right into your gun. Uh, Tuesday is your opportunity to play these things, uh, to dive back into your old favorite raids, uh, to add interesting ornament. God, why? <laughs> You're so close. I was so close. Ornaments to your armaments. That's right. Uh, add interesting ornaments to your favorite armor, to your favorite weapons. Uh, dress up. Get fabulous. Uh, show us why you love Destiny. This is our victory lap. This is the culmination of our Destiny 1 adventure. Uh, we're looking forward to having you join the party, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in the tower. Thanks so much to Ian McIntosh and Josh Hamrick for uh, creating amazing art and uh, making good decisions about how it should work when we're aiming it at each other. Uh, thanks to uh, our guardians who paraded their stuff through the scene today. Thank you, uh, guardians. Thank you, guardians. Uh, I'm Deej. Uh, it's always my pleasure to host. Thank you so much for showing up and adding your conversation to the chat. We will see you Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time when we deploy Age of Triumph to a call.